Hello, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and if any of you are not my brother or sister in Christ yet, why not? You like playing Russian roulette with your soul, I guess. You know, I hope you know. I hope you're awake enough to know that time is running out. Time is running out. Bible prophecy is being fulfill, fulfilled. And what isn't fulfilled is in the process of being fulfilled. And there's not a whole lot left, y'all, except for the millennial reign and the tribulation. We're knocking at the door of the tribulation. I, that ain't no lie. All right, y'all. A lot going on in Israel. I did several videos today, several short videos and one two or three minutes long. I don't remember how long it was, but uh, there's a lot going on over there, y'all. We are in the end times. I'm not lying to you. Goodness gracious, y'all. I'm, I'm here for your Revelation reading. I started to take tonight off from reading Revelation and read Ezekiel chapter 36 and 37 and 38 because that's the prophecy that's, it looks like it's being fulfilled right now. I don't know. God knows. I don't know. But it sure looks that way. Look, It looks, you know, all all the players are in action. All the players prophesied in the Bible are in action against Israel. But anyway, I, I guess till we're deeper into it, we won't know for sure. And I, after the last video, you know, I don't remember how many I made today, three or four or five, I don't know. After the last one, I fell asleep. <laughs> I, I got the Bible and I went to the couch and laid down, stretched out on it. I was going to read Ezekiel again, the, those three chapters, 36, 37, 38, and just see, you know, just compare what's happening today to what those three chapters said and I think I read half of chapter 36 and I was out so I didn't get it finished I did after I woke up I did listen you know there's a man inside my phone that will read the Bible to me I don't know how that works but you know you tell him what Bible book and what Bible chapter and what verses you want read or if you just want him to read all of Ezekiel, you just tell him Ezekiel, or if you want certain chapters in Ezekiel, you tell him and, and he'll do it. It's pretty cool. I don't know. I know I never feed that man. I never water that man, but he's always there ready for me whenever I want him to read to me. And after I woke up, I did have him read me Ezekiel 36, 37, 38. And I started to share it with you tonight so you could see what I'm talking about. Because we, we are in the end times, y'all. If there was any doubt before, you know, it's been a race now. There was no doubt in my mind before, but I hope not yours either. But I didn't I didn't leave Revelation. We're going to continue in Revelation. And we went through chapter 6 last night. Tonight I'm going to give you 7 and 8. Uh, that's a little bit. A few verses longer than I normally give you, but chapter 9 is long. So I'm going to give chapter 9 to you by itself, and I'll give you 7 and 8 separately. So here we go, y'all. And y'all, if you got any loved ones that are lost, you better be sharing Jesus with them. That's all I got to say. I have been expecting and looking for the rapture for 16 or 17 years. I've been posting about it for that long on uh, Facebook. But we are definitely knocking on the door of it now. We are we are so close, and I don't know how close. I I you know. Every day, 
I do something I don't expect to finish and I expect the rapture to come get me before I finish whatever I'm doing or I take a nap and I don't expect to wake up. I expect to get raptured before that nap's over. <laughs> that's how close we are, y'all. Or that's how close I feel we are. But anyway, let me let me keep sharing Revelation because and and that remind me of something else. One of y'all in a comment said something about uh after chapter four in Revelation, the church is not mentioned. That's sort of true. The church is mentioned in chapters 1, 2, and 3. It's not mentioned in 4. After chapter 3, the church is raptured out. So it's not there for chapter 4. It does return, and I meant to look it up, I, I, I forgot, but it's in either chapter 21 or 22 of Revelation, the church does return for the millennial reign when we come back with the bride of Christ, we are the bride of Christ when uh, we come back with our groom for his kingship over the millennial reign, we will be back on earth. But it'll be a new heaven and a new earth then. But we'll come back in 22, 21 or 22. But we are here through three. We're not here in four. And not here four through 20. And it's either 20 or 21 we come back married to Jesus. All right, so here we go, continuing in chapter seven. <clears throat> After these, things, <clears throat> after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. <clears throat> That's a different seal than the mark of the beast, y'all. Don't be afraid of that. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Aser were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Nephthalim were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulon were sealed 12,000. You'd think the more you said that, the easier it get, but it gets harder. <laughs> of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. And of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. Y'all hang on. I'm going to go back and look at something. Well, that is odd. I was going to make a comment about one of the tribes, but that tribe's not there. All right. After this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God which sitteth 
upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And y'all, forgive me for leaning over like this. My back is killing me some more. Did I tell y'all my doctor is getting me, well, I, I, I don't know. She said she was going to get me hooked up with a neurosurgeon and over close to Kansas City. I don't remember the name of the town. Yeah, I do. Salina. Salina. She's getting me hooked up with the neurosurgeon over there, and I'm kind of excited about it. I hope, I don't know. I don't know what to do. <laughs> if it happens this winter, I don't know what to do because I would like it to happen today. Uh, but doctors like that, you usually have to get appointments two or three months out and then nothing happens except talking. So it may be a half year or a year before anything is done and I'll probably be up home with my new body by then, but if the Lord tarries on rapturing us out, I sure would like to get my back worked on. Back in Texas, though, I, I was sent to a neurosurgeon in Houston, and <clears throat> he looked at the latest MRI of my spine, and he shook his head, and he said, there's nothing here I, I can work with. He said, your, your spine is so deteriorated, there's nothing for me to build on to make it stronger. So I don't know. Looks like it would have got worse over the years instead of better. So I don't know. I got a new MRI last week, I think it was. And that after that MRI got came back and my doctor talked to the whatever kind of doctor reads MRIs, she wants to sit me up with the neurosurgeon again. So I don't know. Maybe they think I got some hope. I, I wish somebody could do something because this back is a problem. It is a you, you know, you can't imagine. And the pain is nonstop, never. Okay. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. It is going to be so cool serving Jesus day and night and him dwelling among us. Wow. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hands. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth and there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and there followed hell, and fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth, 
and the third part of the trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. And a second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and as the third part of the sea became blood, and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the water became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, so that the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. And that was that. Well, we whipped through those fast. So I'll be back. Maybe I'll be back tomorrow with first with chapter nine. <laughs> And I think I did enough redneck ranting, rabbit chasing. I will give you one more rabbit chasing. You know the big water tire that's my next door neighbor over here? I showed y'all pictures of it before. It's my house that you're sitting in right now. Welcome to my house. And then a street that runs beside my house. And then my neighbor on the other side of the street, right next door to me, right there, is a water tower and this time of day there's vultures that comes and roost on the top of that water tower and I'm talking about 30 or 40 vultures every day they leave early in the morning as the sun starts coming up and this time of the day they start coming back and then in the winter time they fly down to Texas or somewhere I guess where it's warm but they're still here and it's cold here y'all but I saw on the weather today that our first snow is not expected until the second or third week in October this year. Uh, the first two years I was here, we had snow for two weeks already this time of the year. But this time it says it's not expected until the second or third week in October. So maybe the vultures are waiting for that. I don't know. They probably know more about the weather than the weathermen do. Let me let me run the phone out there and show y'all real quick. They're up there. I saw them all ago. I stand at my side door and stare at them, and they stare at me. And my yard's got vulture feathers all over, and they're long. They're they're pretty feathers. I don't know why they lose their feathers, but they do. Well, let me. I, I don't know if I can walk over there and hold this camera or not. Let me try. I got my walker in one hand. And I got y'all in the other hand. I got the whole world in my hand. And my walker, too. All right, y'all. Here we go. <clears throat> All right, look up yonder. Can you see him? I don't know what I'm showing you. There's a water tire next door to me. And you see all the vultures? There, one of them's going to come see you. Oh, no, he's going the other way. I think that's pretty cool, y'all. I really enjoy watching them. This this little town is up on top of a pretty good sized mountain and uh, it looks like somebody got got to this little mountain. It's not a big mountain. It's tall, but it's not wide. Somebody got to the top of it and just whacked the top off and made it flat and built this tiny town on it 
And so I imagine sitting on top of that water tower, those vultures can probably see for a hundred miles. I don't know how far they can see, but I bet I better get my walker back. Look at look at me walking without my walker. Uh, but anyway, I bet they can see forever, and I bet I don't know how they know where there's dead animals at, but there must be a lot of dead animals for them to be that many and keep coming back year after year. I know there's several, there's a lot of cattle ranchers here. There's a lot of oil wells here. There's a lot of oil wells here. There's more oil wells here than in my part of Texas where my oil wells are. But, uh, and there's a lot of farmers, a lot of the ranchers grows their own uh, feed for their cattle, which is smart. When I had cattle, that's what I did. So there's a lot of farming. Two, two blocks, or actually one and a half blocks this way, back yonder, is a farm field. It had milo in it uh, up until they harvested. And there's corn and wheat and soybeans, and I don't remember what all they grow. I think that's about it. Wheat and milo and corn. And down in Texas, they grew all of that. Well, they didn't grow wheat and they didn't grow soybean down on the Gulf Coast, or at least I never saw any, but they did grow rice and cotton and milo and corn. I, I love agriculture. I taught agriculture for a while. I, uh, I don't remember, I can't remember that far back. That was so long ago, but there was a lapse in me working. I, I worked for one company all my life. I don't remember, maybe it's when I was in college, but how could I have taught? But I was a substitute teacher. The, the teacher, the regular teacher, got cancer and was out and he never came back. Uh, that was back in the dark ages when people didn't even hardly know what cancer was, but he never came back. Anyway, they needed an ag teacher, agriculture teacher, and I taught for a little over a year, I think, and they finally got another ag teacher, a certified ag teacher to take my place, but I knew enough where I helped quite a few young kids, and I enjoyed that. And then they, then they added to that, and that's all I wanted was agriculture. <laughs> but they added to that home economics for junior high girls. Ooh, y'all, uh, uh, no, I didn't last long after that. <laughs> Those girls were cuckoo. I'm man alive. Junior high girls, they were crazy. I didn't last long after that. I said no, ma'am, no sir. I'll do the ag all day long, but I'm not going to deal with junior high <laughs> girls in a kitchen. Goodness gracious. They had everything on their mind except cooking. I tell you, they wanted to cook something, but it wasn't a food. But anyway, I'll hush. I'll see y'all tomorrow unless we get raptured out of here, and then I hope I'll see y'all up yonder. God bless you, friends.